All right. So again, welcome. Uh, thank you for making the time to join me and learn more about our full-time MBA program. My name is Yelena Page, and I work as an assistant director of admissions, uh, primarily working with our full-time and part-time MBA students. I also work a little bit with MS students too. Uh, so joining me today is Michelle Wall. So Michelle, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, tell us about your uh, past academic and professional background and why you chose to get your MBA. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Michelle. Uh, I have a background in digital marketing and advertising on the agency side. I worked in that for about three years prior to pursuing my MBA. Um, I'm hoping to move into more of a brand management role in-house in the consumer industry. So this past summer, I interned at Reckitt on their NFML baby formula. And I chose BC because just through the application process and chatting with different students, going to different uh, info sessions, I really got a sense of the BC community and that really drew me to wanting to pursue my MBA at BC. Great, thank you, Michelle. So here's the agenda for today. We'll talk about Boston College. Uh, we'll give you an overview of our full-time MBA program. Uh, we'll update you on the STEM track that just launched. We'll talk about career development, what's available to full-time MBA students uh, even before they come to campus in terms of career advising. Then we'll go through the application process and uh, toward the end, I will be happy to address any questions if we have the time. So let's just get to it. So uh, about Boston College, we are the oldest institution of higher learning in the city of Boston. So we've been around for a while. We're located in the beautiful neighborhood of Chestnut Hill. Um, so as you can see in the picture on your left, that's our campus. And uh, you can see the city of Boston right behind it. So there's, a, uh, there, there's some great views from here. It is easily accessible by the subway. So we are the last stop on the green line, uh, the B branch, and the stop is called Boston College. Uh, so you have all the amenities of uh, the city life as well as the campus life uh, without being directly uh, located on a very busy road. So the campus is beautiful, uh, easy to get to the city. Um, and for business school students, our business school is located in Fulton Hall. So most of your classes, if not all, unless you're taking some electives outside of the business school, will be located in that one building. So some fun facts about Boston College. Uh, we are located on mile 21 of Boston Marathon Line. So every year on Mar Marathon Monday, classes are canceled. So it's a holiday for us. So all of our students line up along Com Ave to cheer the runners. Uh, we also have runners from BC. So if you're interested in one day running the Boston Marathon, uh, definitely feel free to explore that on campus. We have a red bandana race that's coming up this weekend and uh, what that is, and there's a football game coming up after it too. Uh, so this, uh, the red bandana race, it commemorates one of the BC, BC alum, alums who lost his life during the 9-11 uh, while he was uh, working as a firefighter in New York City and uh, getting uh, people to safety from the World Trade Center. So as a community, we gather around and we commemorate him. Um, some other fun facts about BC, um, it's a Jesuit institution, so giving back to the community is part of life here. So we'll talk about this later, but all of our students, undergrads and grads, are required to uh, complete some sort of community service during their time here. So with the full-time MBA program, the program is a generalist MBA, so there are no concentrations as part of our MBA program. Uh, students will complete it in two years, and there's an internship component with uh, between year one and year two. So the profile of class that just started this fall, uh, we enrolled 76 students. I believe Michelle's class had about 97. <laughs> so, Small class, uh, you will never have, uh, we will never enroll more, more than 100 students in an MBA program, and then we split you into two cohorts. So you really will never have more than 50 students in your class. So the average GMAT was 645, average GRE was 312. 
uh, on average, students that joined us this fall have about four and a half years of work experience and 36% are women. About 24% of our enrolled students this year are international. So they joined us from different parts of the world, such as China, India, Nigeria, a couple of countries in Latin America. So the MBA program, it's a 57 credit program and it takes about two years to complete. And I talked earlier about um, having two different cohorts. So it's cohort model. What this means is that you start the program with the same group and you finish the program with the same group. And all classes in year one are going to be offered over seven weeks uh, seven week terms, and I'll have Michelle talk about this a little uh, in a second. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a summer internship between year one and year two. <laughs> and then when you move into year two, uh, it goes back to the to following the regular semester format, uh, and most of your classes will be in the evening. All right, so here's the here's what the program in your year one looks like. So these are the classes that you would that you will be taking. <coughs> um, so Michelle, uh, how was it taking classes uh, over the course of seven weeks? It's definitely very fast paced, um, but the good thing is that, you know, you get through it pretty quickly and you move on to the next thing. So um, you do move through the core curriculum uh, pretty quickly so that you can get to your electives and really concentrate your studies on what you'd like to focus on. So, you know, in the second semester, being able to take some more um, electives that were focused towards what I want to do was really valuable. And now in my second year, I get to choose all of my electives and really hone in on uh, that specific area that I want to focus on. Great. Um, so as you can see, there are three data analytics courses uh, as part of our MBA program. Uh, so what happened uh, with uh, our curriculum is that uh, since we collaborate with many different companies to make sure our students have successful internship experience and later um, successful employment, the feedback that we got from a lot of our corporate partners was that they're looking for individuals who are capable of working with data. So BC took that feedback very seriously and uh, they put the data analytics classes into our core curriculum. Now, one of the frequent questions that I have from uh, prospective students is, uh, and Michelle, you can answer this, is uh, are you required to have a previous knowledge of Python or SQL or some of these coding programs before you take data analytics courses? You definitely do not need any kind of a background to that. I think it is helpful, but it's not required. Um, I think all of the data analytics classes that we've taken are very manageable and the professors are also so willing to chat with you um, if you need additional help. Um, but the class is also really collaborative. So you get to work with other students and learn from them as well. Um, so I would say it's definitely very manageable. And I even, I didn't have any prior experience um, in an educational setting with data analytics. And I was definitely um, able to handle them very well and actually took a coding elective in my second semester because I enjoyed it so much. Oh, that's great. Um, so from your core curriculum, what has been your favorite class uh, or what has been your most use useful class that you utilize during your internship experience? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I would say probably two courses that stood out to me are um, marketing, obviously, because I was a marketing intern. So definitely learned a lot more about, you know, brand management um, and the product life cycle there. But then also the managing people and organizations class was a really useful class because you learned so much more about how the company works and how to really, you know, even just people skills there. That's so valuable in the workplace. Um, so it's really nice to have a class that focuses on that. Great. And while we're talking about the curriculum, can you talk a little bit about this uh, one week course, Thinking Strategically, a global integrative simulation? Uh, what is it and what do you get out of it? 
Yeah, definitely. That was a great course. I think everyone really enjoyed it. So you're put in for the last week of your program uh, groups of about, I think it was five or six people. And for that entire week, uh, you're in this online simulation where you essentially are the C-suite of a company. You're making these decisions, you're launching new products, and you're competing against the other groups from your cohort. Um, so it, every day, um, you know, the, the financials will come out at the end of the day, you'll see what your stock price is. And it's a fun little competition with everything that you've learned throughout the year. Um, but, you know, it, it kind of puts it into more of a, um, a useful and applicable way uh, to really uh, use everything that you've learned. So it's definitely a really fun course. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll move to the talking a little bit about electives. So you will have um, at Carroll School of Management, we offer over 150 electives to our uh, graduate students. Um, and uh, you, will, you, you will tailor your electives or your second year uh, program based off of uh, your own interests. So where do you wanna end up career-wise? What classes do you think uh, would be most helpful to you. So if you're interested in marketing, like Michelle, you would probably take more marketing classes. If you're interested in finance, you would take more finance classes, entrepreneurship, you will take those entrepreneurship classes. Uh, so we give you plenty of options without, um, without offering you uh, concentrations or without sil siloing you into just one specific area. Uh, so your second year tends to be very flexible where most classes are in the evening. Um, and Michelle, I think you're, you're currently in your second year. So when do you take your classes? And then what do you do during the day if your classes are in the evening? Yeah, so uh, my classes are mostly 7 to 9.30 at night. I have one class per night, Monday through Thursday. Um, but then there's also a time slot, I believe, from 4.30 to 7. It just worked out that all my classes happen to be at 7. Uh, so during the day, um, I focus on just, you know, getting my work done. Um, I work with the admissions team one day a week. Um, and, you know, just also... Um, doing things that I want to do. I know this is probably the only time in my life I'm going to have a little bit of time during the day to, um, you know, relax a little bit or get other things done. So, you know, balancing that with my work um, and also, you know, the recruiting process is, is valuable as well. So really trying to have a balance of everything while I can with this free time. Great. Thank you. Um, so we also have some applied learning opportunities available to MBA students. Uh, so these are classes uh, where uh, students can work on um, uh, on a different sort of like uh, mini consulting projects where a faculty will bring in a project from a company and ask you to work on. Uh, Michelle, have you taken any uh, any of these classes? Yes. So last semester, I took the digital marketing and analytics uh, class. And then this semester, I'm in the entrepreneurial marketing strategy. They're both taught with the same professor. Uh, he is great. Um, and the course is basically structured where part of it is lecture, where you're learning the different concepts. But then the other part of the course is actually being assigned with a group to work with a specific company where you're going to act as consultants for them and provide real recommendations on their business strategy. Uh, so I believe for the class that I'm in right now, we're getting our assignments next week. So that's really exciting. Um, but it was also great last semester to really see the impact you could have on a company. And I believe we actually had one of our two, one or two of our recommendations implemented. Um, so it's definitely a really exciting course to take. Wonderful. Um, and these would be your electives, correct? Correct. Okay, great. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that our elective offerings, they tend to change every semester. So we're not going to offer every single class every single semester. So make sure you talk to, if you do come to BC, make sure you talk to your academic advisor um, about uh, your plan and what you hope to take. So they'll be able to uh, walk you through it and can tell you when to expect that these classes will be available for you to take. And then um, recently we la launched a STEM designated track within our MBA program. So the program itself is not STEM designated, but if you're looking to um, get that STEM track, uh, that's definitely available to you. The way that it works, you would still apply to the regular MBA program. And then once prompted, um, it will ask you, are you interested in STEM designated tracks? So once you get that prompt, you would just select yes or no. Um, and uh, 
the STEM designation really focuses on uh, classes that will dive deeper into applications of statistical modeling, uh, data mining, warehousing, programming. Uh, so your elective classes uh, will be taken up by these STEM classes. So you won't have as many free electives to take because of the STEM, uh, STEM designation. So this is, uh, this is primarily important to international students who are looking to stay and work in the US because this STEM designated track will allow you to extend your OPT for additional 24 months. So you will get your 12 months of OPT and then you can get an extension for additional 24 months. So in total, that's 36 months of OPT. Um, so if I go back to, um, to the uh, program overview, wherever you see electives on here, uh, they will have to be STEM designated electives. And you can access the, uh, the STEM designated elective classes through our website. So it's available right now. So if you go on our MBA programs website, you'll see STEM designated track, and then you'll be able to click on a link that will um, um, have a document with all of our STEM designated classes. In your year two, um, each semester, you will have to take at least two STEM designated electives. So just something to keep in mind. And again, you can work with academic advising staff uh, to make sure that you are on the STEM track. So we'll talk about career development uh, and what's available to full-time MBA students. Um, so our we have a very small uh, career team uh, that works with our small MBA class to help them achieve their career goals. So there are two MBA career advisors, uh, Marilyn Eckelman, who's also our associate dean, and uh, Donna Modica, who's the director of um, Career Center. If you're interested in MS programs, there is a there is an advisor for MS programs too. Uh, we have a recruiting manager who works with different companies to bring internship and employment opportunities to our grad student body. Uh, her name is Kate. And we also have a uh, Andrea Morahan. She's our office manager, so she will help out with a lot of documentation. So our career center is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. If you need to meet with them with, uh, uh, if you need to meet with them off hours, feel free to email them, and I'm sure they'll be able to accommodate you. So, Michelle, how early did you start working with career advisors? I think pretty early on in my first year, um, because the recruiting process does start in the fall. Um, but they are super helpful um, from everything from just trying to find networking opportunities or you know any kind of roles um, even just interview prep i know once i got an interview i immediately emailed my career advisor and said Do you have time to meet she was able to fit me in um, and you know it's just super super helpful insights that they have in the career center um, that i think are super valuable for the recruiting process so i've definitely had such a great uh, experience working with my career advisor and i'm actively working with her right now again Great. So if you could uh, uh, do something differently in terms of career services, like if, if you knew what you what you know now, uh, you know, uh, going back to when you started the program, what would you do differently? Oh, um, I think I might have even started meeting with her um, a little bit earlier, um, because one thing that I didn't realize is even some uh, postings are posted before you even start your program. So getting a head start, having your cover letter ready, um, that was something that I definitely needed to touch up a little bit when I got to school. So um, that took me a little bit more time. Um, and even just finding some, you know, networking connections, um, I should have started that a little bit earlier as well. Um, but that's something that, you know, um, once you get here, you can jump right in with your career advisor and they can help you out with everything. Great. So our students uh, currently have a weekly MBA focused career newsletter that our recruiting manager Kate sends out. Uh, you get one on one personalized career advising. Um, and uh, there are many of career development tools that are av available online that you can tap into. Um, I think there is a, a student, I think it's a student portal that connects students to alumni. Um, Michelle, have you used it? Do you know the, what the name of it is? It's Eagle something. I think it's called Eagle Exchange. Yes. 
Yeah, I've used it. Um, I think usually even when I am looking for connections, if it's at a specific company, um, LinkedIn is also really helpful. But then I'll even just go to my career advisor and say, hey, do you know anybody? And she can look through her connections and say, yeah, I know all of these alumni at these companies and I'll send you their contact information. And how responsive are BC alumni? Very responsive. I've definitely had some great conversations um, and I'm looking to have some more, um, but you know, you reach out, whether it's LinkedIn, email, people are so willing to chat with you. It's such a close knit uh, alumni network and they're always willing to help out a BC student. Great. Um, and then uh, there, I know there are employ employer information and networking sessions on campus. I think uh, last week and earlier this week, we just had some. I know that uh, we had Johnson & Johnson on campus. I believe Liberty was around and Fidelity. Uh, so you'll be able to meet with these employers. They're typically alumni that work at these companies, so you'll be able to meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we had a large career fair uh, last weekend, I believe. So there are career fairs that you can tap into on campus too. So checking your weekly MBA-focused career newsletter will be very important to find out what type of career activities are happening on and off campus. Um, okay, so these are the uh, MBA career outcomes. So as you can see, um, Financial services, tech, uh, healthcare, consulting, those are very popular in the greater Boston area. So that's typically where our alums uh, gravitate toward. Uh, we have a very strong finance department. So uh, a lot of people come to BC because of that, which is why you'll find a lot of uh, our students and alumni uh, gravitating toward those particular areas. Uh, marketing seems to be the second uh, more popular um, job function that uh, our alums are in. Uh, then consulting is definitely growing. Um, I know that there are a couple of consulting internships uh, ha that happened this uh, past year. So it's, uh, it's a growing field for BC. So last, the, the class that graduated not this year, but last year, their average total compensation was 125,271. For class that graduated this year, it's around 133. So we've increased our total compensation. So those numbers will be published on our website uh, uh, within the next uh, couple of days. Uh, so Michelle's class had a 98% internship placement, which is uh, terrific. And then you can see the list of companies where our students end up interning in. So we'll talk about uh, culture at the Carroll School of Management. So one thing to point out that we are a Jesuit institution. So giving back and building strong community is at its core here at Boston College. So all of our students are required to complete 20 hours of community service before they graduate. So this is your graduation requirement. There is no uh, way around it. So community service is very important. Uh, Michelle, how do students find community service opportunities? Yeah, there's a ton of ways to find community service opportunities. Um, there is a grad student's newsletter that's sent around every week with opportunities. Um, you can also go on um, like volunteer match and find opportunities there. There's a lot of different ways uh, to volunteer. I recently completed my volunteer hours and I did some work with the Boys and Girls Club, uh, packing food boxes. I also volunteered at 5Ks as a course assistant. And then I know there's the Invest in Kids program that BC offers where um, students will tutor a middle school students in the local area. Um, and that's another way you can get some volunteer hours in as well. Great. Uh, so tell us a little about the Graduate Management Association. I know you are part of the marketing club. Uh, so what is GMA? Uh, what's available to, uh, you know, incoming MBA students to get involved with? Yeah, so there's a bunch of different clubs as part of the GMA, uh, whether you're interested in marketing, finance, consulting, there's clubs for all the different focus areas. So uh, I am one of the presidents of the Marketing Association. 
Um, we'll put on networking events, events with other clubs. Um, we're looking to bring in a guest speaker soon. And we recently did an internship panel where we had some second years uh, to talk about their experiences this past summer. Um, so it was really helpful as the first years are getting ramped up in their recruiting process. But then the GMA also puts on social events for the whole Carroll School of Management. So they have, you know, they had a welcome back picnic. They'll do some bar nights. Um, they'll host tailgates at the football games. So there's a bunch of different ways to meet so many people in your program, but also find ways to get involved in clubs of your shared interests as well. Great. Um, so one, uh, one of the common feedback that we get from um, uh, from prospective students is that it seems like a very collaborative place. So how does this collaboration translate into your classroom experience? Like are, are students competing against each other? Uh, what is that like? Definitely not competing against each other. I was actually so surprised about the level of collaboration and how everyone is really willing to help each other, um, whether that's forming study groups for, you know, an upcoming exam to just bounce ideas off each other. There's also a ton of group projects in your classes uh, where you'll get to work with your peers. Um, so it's definitely collaborative and I would not say it's competitive at all in the classroom. Great. All right, so let's just just jump into the application before we go uh, before we move forward to the questions. So these are our application deadlines. We just had a deadline two days ago that was our round one deadline. Um, so everybody who applied by October fourth uh, should receive a decision no later than November thirtieth. Our next deadline is coming up on November 29th. Um, so I would uh, if you, if, if you started your application, you still have a bit of time to work on it. Definitely feel free to submit it before November 29th. We tend to, when we have time, we tend to uh, review applications on a rolling basis. So if your application gets uh, complete, we will most likely review it even earlier. Uh, so just something to bear in mind. And then for international students, uh, because uh, international students typically live abroad and uh, um, just to, you know, so just so you can plan your travel and uh, living arrangement, we, we asked you to submit no later than March 7th. Uh, so your application should be in by no later than March 7th. And then our final deadline for uh, domestic students, so US citizens, permanent residents, DACA, TPS, uh, will be on May 2nd. So uh, make sure you submit your application when you feel like it's ready to be submitted. Uh, we're still very early on in the process, so there's time. Uh, so don't feel like you have to rush to make, uh, you know, round one or round two deadline. Um, just submit it when you can uh, put forward the strongest possible application. In terms of requirements, we require that you submit a resume. Um, there is an essay portion of the application where we ask you why BC and how does BC's MBA fit into your short-term and long-term goals, your academic transcripts. So if you have copies, feel free to upload copies of your academic transcripts. We will only ask for official transcripts if we admit you and then you enroll, then you'll have to send us your official transcripts. And when we say official transcripts, we mean that we need to receive your transcripts directly from the institution that you attended. Um, it cannot be sent to you and then you upload it into your application system, then it's, that wouldn't be official. The transcript needs to come from your school to us directly. I know some international students are running into issues about uh, um, with timing for those transcripts. So if you are accepted and enroll, uh, but your school doesn't provide electronic copies, you can hand in a sealed envelope to our admissions officers uh, once you're on campus and we'll accept those as official, as long as the envelope is not open. So it has to be sealed. Uh, GMAT or GRE, um, we do provide waiver option for full-time MBA and part-time MBA programs. So you can apply to get your GMAT waived. Now to qualify for the waiver, we ask that you have at least three years of professional work experience. Your undergrad GPA needs to be at least a 3.0. Um, and then uh, we ask that you submit your resume and a transcript when you apply for the waiver. If you are applying as an international student who studied outside of the US borders, 
So if you studied uh, at a school outside of the United States, it can even be Canada or Mexico or anywhere in Europe or Asia. If it's a non-US institution, you have to submit an evaluation of your international transcript. Uh, and the evaluation can come from WES, uh, World Education Services. We also accept Stantran, ECE, and CED. Um, if you submit a GMAT request that doesn't have the evaluation, we will email you and ask for an evaluation, or we will just deny your request. So the evaluation is uh, an absolute requirement for the GMAT waiver application. And then if you studied at a school where the language of instru instruction is not English, you have to submit a TOEFL or IELTS score. Minimum TOEFL that we accept is 100. Minimum IELTS that we accept is 7.5. We ask that you submit one letter of recommendation, and the recommendation ha uh, has to be professional if possible. So if you have work experience, please submit a professional letter of recommendation. Um, I would advise you not to focus on an individual's job title, but, folk, uh, but make sure that you get a letter of recommendation for someone that you worked with closely. It can be a supervisor, a manager, a client, a colleague, just somebody that you worked with very closely who's familiar with your work ethic and can answer uh, some of the evaluative questions on that recommendation letter. And then interviews are by invitation only, so not everyone gets invited to an interview. Please don't be discouraged if you don't get an interview and invitation. Uh, it doesn't um, it doesn't mean anything negative. Um, it just uh, means that you probably answered all of the questions that we asked. And uh, um, unless you state in your resume that uh, um, you know you are a uh, uh, a ballet dancer who didn't get the Cirque du Soleil audition and now wants to get a business degree, then yes, we'll invite you to an interview and uh, ask you a lot of questions about that. So um, let's see. And tuition and aid. So uh, if we admit you into the program, we'll all automatically consider you for a merit-based scholarship. Um, current cost of tuition per semester, and it's a flat rate, is 29515 and you'll have to complete four semesters uh, in the MBA program. So that's two years. We offer merit-based scholarships such as Dean Scholarship. There's a Reaching Out MBA Scholarship for the uh, LGBTQ plus community. Uh, we have Prospanica Scholarship for Latinx, and uh, we also offer McMullen Fellowship. So McMullen Fellowship is only offered to Naval Academy graduates. Um, so if you're a graduate of Naval Academy, uh, we can consider you for the McMullen Fellowship. Graduate assistantships are available. Uh, Michelle, you are our grad assistant. Uh, so assistantships provide a small stipend per semester. So they're definitely, uh, you definitely won't be able to pay your tuition from the assistantship funds, uh, but it does give you a small stipend that you can uh, use for some personal expenses. Uh, and if you are a U.S. military uh, member, we do have a Veterans Affairs Office here at Boston College. Uh, we have a lot of veterans in our programs. Uh, I think this year we probably enrolled about 10. Uh, so plenty of support for uh, U.S. military on campus. And then we have a financial aid office. So if you are a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, you can apply for student financial aid, so FAFSA. And we have a financial aid office that you can work with if you have any questions about that. So what's next? Uh, you can uh, scan the QR code in the top right-hand corner and you can schedule a chat with admissions team. We have plenty of blog posts on our website. Uh, I will ask you to uh, just bear with us a little bit. We just launched a new website today, so the information looks a little funky. So hopefully we'll iron that out uh, by end of this week. Uh, if you want to connect with a current student, uh, we have a lot of MBA ambassadors that would be willing to chat with you. You can email bcambassadors at bc.edu and uh, we'll uh, match you up with a student. 